Hi everyone and welcome back to J Music Talks. Today I wanted to touch on some of the instrumentation that you might need to start teaching woodwind lessons. In particular I teach saxophone, flute, and clarinet and I kind of wanted to share my current setup and maybe a beginner setup that you can work with and adapt to your own teachings if you're just starting out or maybe I can show you something that you can add to make your teaching that much better. So stay tuned, let's go check out what I currently have. So these are the instruments that I actually use to teach on the daily. So I usually bring a B flat clarinet, a flute. Uh, currently this is a C flute flute. I originally wanted a B foot, but it was just more cost effective for me to get the C foot. So eventually it will be a B foot, but currently it is just a C foot. And then I have one B flat and one E flat saxophone. I used to just have uh, my E flat alto, but I found that when I had tenor sax students and soprano sax students, I wasn't able to play with them as well just because I couldn't transpose some of their upper level repertoire that fast. It would come out so quickly and I could not keep up to it. So I personally do like to keep two saxophones. Um, one in B flat and one in E flat. I originally had my tenor, now I have my soprano uh, and it just works so much better because it's smaller, more compact and I can get some extra soprano playing in so very much a plus there. Now along with those saxophones and flute and clarinet come all of my cases. I've tried to put them into more compact cases. The only one that is not in a compact case is the soprano and that is because it is new to me so it is still in its original big old case so eventually that one will have uh, a nice new slimline case to sort of pack away. Um, so I do try and pack them in the tiniest case possible. Uh, for each instrument, I try and have a stand that fits in the case, with the exception of the alto. So the alto saxophone stand, I do leave here, and I do leave it set up. So that's why there's an extra flute peg, clarinet peg on there, just, you know, in case I need to use it or a student wants to double on it. And I pick stands for each of the instruments that actually fit in in their cases. So the flute stand fits right beside the flute case. The clarinet stand actually can fit up the bell. Same with the soprano stand. It can fit right up the bell and they're all fairly sturdy and well made. Along with my instruments there's a few extra accessories that I like to keep. Now some of these are standard if you are in university or a professional musician and working but they're not always standard in a student's case. So I like to keep them on hand because and I have my own set, I know exactly how they work, and I don't have to worry about them bringing them, uh, although it is recommended. So I do have a tuner metronome combo. I mostly just use this for the tuner or the metronome when I plug it into my stereo, which gives it 10 times the power and really drives the message home that we gotta keep the beat. I do also have a standard metronome as well. I have pad cleaning paper for sticky pads. That one is just a cheap one that I got that I'm using up before I buy the nicer one. And then I also have my reed adjusting uh, materials. So I have a piece of plexiglass uh, that can be picked up at any hardware store really. Um, and then because I use sandpaper to teach the kids, I have a piece of sandpaper here. I also have extra sandpaper in with all my stuff over there. And I have a set of screwdrivers as well. So we kind of do adjusting and um, you know, screwing in any loose screws if I see them. And that's pretty much all the sort of hardware stuff that I have that's a little extra. To keep things clean, I also like to have tissues and hand sanitizer. That's for me as well because sometimes I'll handle a mouthpiece that's been played on or a reed that's been played on and I like to sanitize my own hands and you know have a tissue that I could wrap something that maybe has spit up you know on it. I also have a bottle of Sterosol for again the cleaning um, if I'm having to deal with a mouthpiece that has a lot of buildup. And same with the water, the water for rinsing any mouthpieces that are getting a little funky or just if I need it for reed wetting, if you know someone's having dry mouth or I'm having dry mouth that day then there's a fresh water bottle right back there. I do also have a few little accessories in here. I try and keep this to a minimum. Um, so I have some pencils and pens. I have my detailed eraser pen. Now this guy right here um, really works well. What is it? Speed erase? Oh that's upside down. There we go. 
Speed Erase. So that one's really good because it gets into detailed work. Uh, pencil sharpener that I never use because I use mechanical pencils. Um, an Expo marker for the whiteboard. Just clean that. Doesn't everyone just love a fresh, clean whiteboard? It's just so much nicer. I have some clips uh, for clipping on music, especially if those books do not stay still, the really big thick ones that kind of close shut on you. I like to have one of those. And then I have a little brush in here for scrubbing out mouthpieces or sending kids to the bathroom to scrub out their own mouthpiece if it is that disgusting and then they have to sanitize my brush. Uh, in the bottom of the cup I also do have little weights that um, I use to switch out on the cleaning cloths and some paper clips just, you know, in case you need them. Other things I have in here that just help me along with the process of teaching and you know really pushing forward on learning is having a boombox. Uh, now this one does have uh, extras on it. Uh, I did make sure it had the aux cable jack so that I could plug in my iPod uh, to get backing tracks or to use the metronomes. And I also made sure that it had a proper CD player so that it plays all the CDs that come in. Some of the newer CDs are only meant for computer. Those ones I do digitize, so I will ask to borrow it, take it home, digitize it, and then bring it back so that we can play with that CD because it's always nice to have uh, backgrounds to play with instead of just playing by yourself all the time. And of course, coffee and water. I need beverages. I have to talk a lot in here. And you also have to play a lot. And that means that you're going to need some kind of liquid to keep your throat moist, to keep it, you know, all fine, lips, everything. Just good thing to have beverages. Uh, I normally drink the coffee first, and then when I'm teaching, I drink on the water. And I find that if I have a cup with a straw, for some reason I drink more water. So that's why the special cup with the straw and the water bottle, because I will drink more of this when it is here than I will of the water bottle. Strange, but there you go. Now that's what I'm currently using to teach with. When I first started, I did not have that many instruments. I didn't have that many books. You can't see now, but I do have a whole bookshelf to my right here, completely full of books. They're mostly for teaching. There are some textbooks in there as well, but I do like to keep stocked and then I switch them in and out to the studio because uh, I only have that tiny file folder in there as you saw in the last video, which I will try and link uh, somewhere either in the iCards or at the end. Sorry for the cut there, my dog just came in and she really needed attention, so <laughs> real life, right? Uh, when I first started teaching, I did start out only using uh, a tenor sax and a clarinet. I didn't have a flute, uh, I was in the process of buying my alto, I only had a couple books, but I did start. So it's not saying that you need all these things to start teaching. You can start teaching at any point. You do not need all these fancy things. Uh, you don't need uh, every single book. You do not need every single instrument. Especially if you're only going to be teaching a select few, you only really need those ones. In terms of books and other materials, just make sure that you have paper, manuscript paper, pens, pencils, uh, stickers are always good and you can get them from the dollar store. Post-it notes for writing little memos or if you need someone to go pick up a certain book. It's very good to write it down so that a parent can see that. And also maybe, I don't know, a good eraser? <laughs> uh, sometimes kids will write all over their music with really wrong markings, if you are teaching children that is. And it's sometimes nice to erase all of those and simplify the markings so they can really see through exactly what they have. So I have one big eraser, one detailed eraser as well. In terms of books, I would have to say make sure that you have a book that has a fingering chart, especially for woodwinds. It's a lot easier to show a picture of a fingering chart than to constantly try and explain it showing the actual fingerings on the instrument. Not to say I don't do that, I use a combination of the uh, two methods. I, so I show them on my saxophone or flute or clarinet and then I also use the book as well and maybe have a method book, your choice of method book. It could be an easier method book, it could be a more advanced method book, it could be one that you've used previously as well. So you can take your pick there. If they are doing uh, a certain stream like the RCM, you can get them to buy a full set of books that has a scale book, uh, an etude technique book, and also the repertoire book. And it's kind of like a full set, ready to go system. 
I also like to have fun pieces on hand for them to play. So I use the fun pieces as sight reading personally, or if they're just not having a good day, they want something familiar to play instead of uh, whatever they're being kind of made to play in band if they're really not liking it or whatever is in their book if they're doing a classical book and they just need uh, that break of fun music that they've seen in a recent movie or they've heard on the radio. I like to have that on hand uh, for each instrument just so that they can break it up uh, and I can get some sight reading practice for them in there. Uh, I do believe sight reading is a very key part in any lesson and you should try and get them to sight read every time even if it's only a couple bars it just it'll help with absolutely everything it'll ensure fingerings are correct because you can check them as they go along uh, it'll ensure their reading is correct in case you missed teaching them a certain rhythm or teaching them a certain combination of notes and it definitely helps uh, with constantly receiving new music in so they're not scared to learn a new piece they're you know they're ready to learn absolutely anything you throw at them if they get used to you know you tossing in sight reading every week like I do uh, they kind of expect that there's going to be something new coming whenever I say we're doing sight reading, so that's always there. So to recap, we need a book with fingerings, we need a technique book, and then we need some fun music for them. You can also kind of contain all of their rep uh, as a uh, copy for yourself. Does that make sense? No, that doesn't. My brain is scrambled. <laughs> so you can have a copy of each of their pieces as well if you would like to work that way. Personally, I have too many students working out of too many books to have absolutely everyone's piece in my area at all times. It's It just doesn't happen. So I always tell them they have to bring that book, but I do always have a book with a fingering chart, a scale book, and then something fun to read in case they do forget their book. And the final setup that I would like to show you is my on-the-go as kind of a bonus one. So this is for when I do in-home teaching. Uh, I just have a backpack here. I use this one forever. But inside the backpack, I actually have, I have my flute, I have my clarinet, and then I have a small amount of teaching materials that I carry with me. Uh, I try and get my kids to buy all the books that they need when they're doing in-home. But I do like to carry a few things with me when I'm there. So, as I said, I have some fun kind of sight reading stuff just so that they keep engaged. I do have a duet book back there as well. And I did take out the books with the fingering charts. They used to be in here. But currently, all of my in-homes uh, know their fingerings very well and are far advanced uh, beyond needing those books. So I don't have those in there anymore, but I did used to have them in there. I have my manuscript paper and my blank paper. I have pen, pencil, eraser. And I also have post-its, stickers, and little tabs in there as well. The final item that I carry with me is a small planner. This one I also have all of my lesson notes in. I have the tabs for marking pages and I also have a pen. So very similar to my other notebook, this one is just far more compact. As you can see, it's about the size of my hand and I just keep it with me for in-homes. Thank you for taking the time to watch my video on my current setup in my studio and a potential starter setup for yourself maybe if you want to start teaching woodwind lessons. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon.